Well, hi, everybody. I want to welcome you to the first week of our Advent study for this year, uh, Scent. We hope that you found it to be uh, a good read so far, that it's meaningful and it's good for um, your season this year. I want to introduce you to my daughter, Mariah. Can you say hi? Hi. And I want to ask you a question. Can I ask you a question? Yes. What is your favorite part of Christmas? Presents. Presents, of course. Um, what's the best present you've ever received? Gymnastics. Your gymnastics bar. Okay. And is there anything else you like about Christmas? God. God. You said that because you thought I'd like that answer, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you do one thing for me? Yeah. Get out of here. Leave me alone. I got stuff to do. Um, but again, thank you for joining us uh, again. This I've really enjoyed this study and hope that you have too. And I just want to spend a few moments hitting the high points and seeing if we can't sort of apply this to uh, the reality that we face now. So the key word for this week is reconciliation. And when I think about that word, I think about the uh, that wonderful hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And, uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, this is that, that's a hymn that has deep Methodist roots. It's a Charles Wesley hymn. And the line in that is, God and sinners reconciled. And you want to talk a little bit about what that word means. Um, but the, the, the story that sort of stuck out to me, that it begins there, um, is the story that Jacob Armstrong tells about the journey to Waffle House with his daughters. They'd always seen that restaurant, and he's the pastor at Providence United Methodist Church in Mount Juliet. Maybe you've seen that Waffle House too. Uh, but they drove by that Waffle House almost every day, and they always wondered what was in that Waffle House. Now, they're unlike our family because we've been to Waffle House plenty of times. But they said, we want to do this. We want to know what it is. And so they decide one morning to get up super early from sc before school and go to Waffle House. And on the way to the Waffle House, they, the girls are just in wonder because they can't believe that so many people are already up and moving and going so early. And he says to them, sometimes when you do something you don't normally do, you see things that you don't normally see. So I want to ask you, when in your life have you experienced that very thing? When have you done something or seen some, done something that you don't normally do and you've seen something that you don't normally see? Um, I would encourage you, if you'd like to, to um, place that comment underneath this video in our YouTube page um, and we can sort of have a discussion in that way back together again or together again. Um, one of the things I love about this season um, is how familiar it is. Now, my 13-year-old is not here with us, but he loves Christmas. And one of the splurges that we have in our life is satellite radio. And as soon as the season comes around and the music on satellite radio offers Christmas music channels, he immediately wants to start listening to those channels. And he doesn't pick the uh, updated, brand-new um, music. He wants to listen to the holiday traditions, the Dean Martins and the Frank Sinatras and all that good old, the Dean Autry stuff, all those good classic Christmas songs. And we sing familiar hymns and we read familiar scripture and we tell familiar stories. And it's the story of a baby who comes to us in a very unfamiliar way and affects our lives in a way that we, well, that we never really expected. And so the question here is, how does God usually show up in our lives? Um, and I want to read this part of Luke to, to you, the second chapter, just a few verses. And we know this story. Um, so it's sec, uh, the second chapter, it starts with verse 8. And it says, In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night, their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. 
the reason that Jacob Armstrong tells that story about going to Waffle House is because he thinks that if Jesus were to be born today, the angel wouldn't appear to us in church, wouldn't appear to us in our fancy homes, but would appear to us at a place like Waffle House at five o'clock in the morning. People who maybe didn't think they were worth it, didn't expect it, didn't think it was possible. Those are the kind of people that Jesus would come to. Um, and so I'll ask again, where does God usually show up? Well, if we look at throughout the scripture and go back to the Old Testament, we see God show up with Moses, who was basically on the run from uh, his terrible action in Egypt. He had gone into the wilderness and finally found a family, but he was not where he was supposed to be, and he had experienced not great stuff. But God came and empowered him to be the hero and the leader of the Jewish people. Um, shepherds, again, in this in this story, people who were plain folk, who were hard workers and who worked outside. They weren't fancy people. Jesus' disciples were of all sorts of different backgrounds, but they were young and inexperienced, and they were fishermen and tax collectors. They came from all sorts of different places. Um, and then later we see a persecutor of the church in Saul who turned people over to punishment, and God shows up with him and empowers him to be probably the church's greatest missionary. And these are dramatic scenes that are told among weak and troubled people, lesser people we might consider them. But the interesting thing about that is we don't always have to talk about lesser people because sometimes we, we may not think we are those. But I would tell you there are moments in our lives when we probably are lesser than we really think we are. There are times when we're weak rather than strong, times when we are confident, and times when we're vulnerable rather than confident, times when we're sick rather than well. We know that very well this year. We find moments in our lives when we feel exposed to the real elements, um, when we are distracted and vulnerable, as I said, when we're weak, when we've been hurt, when we're all by ourselves and feel neglected, when we just go about our daily lives not really thinking about or expecting a miracle to happen. But that's when our encounters with God incur many times. And that's when those encounters most deeply change us. You see, Advent is the story of a vulnerable baby coming to save a vulnerable people, changing our perspectives on how to look at life, trying to fulfill our true and deepest longings, providing to us grace and love in a way they never expected before. God and sinners reconcile. What has been broken can now be repaired. Those broken parts of our life, those broken people that we know, ourselves, we can now be repaired and restored to people that God has created us to be. So, I would also say, considering this year, rather than Sometimes we do something that we don't always do, and we see something that we don't always see. I think the theme of the, for this year for us is that sometimes we experience something that we've never experienced, and the reaction is something that we never thought possible. This has been a tough year, hasn't it? We've missed seeing each other at church until very recently. We've been through a, a terrible, we're going through a terrible pandemic, which continues to grow uh, we went through a hateful election cycle, but still, still, the grace of God shines through. Uh, I've been so happy to see so many people in our church maintain such deep connection with each other, even though we couldn't be together. There are stories over and over about people helping each other so much and doing such loving and graceful things to each other. That is reconciliation. That's the spirit of Advent. So, God's going to show up in our lives in ways that we don't expect. God's going to show up to people that we don't think are worth it. Sometimes we're those people who aren't worthy. So thank you for joining me for the first week. Dr. Kevin's going to be sharing the second week with you. Um, and I would encourage you as we leave to keep looking for those things, keep doing those things that you don't always do. Surround yourself with people that you may not always surround yourself with because we're going to see God. God's going to show up in our lives in a way that we would not expect. So be blessed, and I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks. Take care.